Welcome back to the feature match. Andrea Mangucci is still with us. And what are we playing today, Andrea? We are playing Modern, which I am very, very excited about. It's like the format, right? Yeah, I, I mean, love it. We brought the big guns as decks today. Uh, that being said, if you would like to see any specific deck being played on this show, make sure to scroll down there, click the subscribe button, and then scroll down even further to type a comment with the favorite deck you would like to see on this show. Also, go check out Andrea's channel. I assume there's modern to be found there? Yeah, I try to play every deck, so you can probably find <laughs> every deck you think of. Maybe I'm more on the competitive side, but uh, I do stream a daily modern on twitch.tv slash Andrea Mangucci, and you can find those videos often on my YouTube channel on Andrea Mangucci video. Yeah, of course, you edit the VODs and then upload them. But with that being said, let's get into our games. It's modern and what better than, you know, your pet deck. My pet deck happens to be Is It Merktide featuring Blood Moon over Archmage's Charm. I have a beautiful, the dark version of the card. I prefer this over Archmage's Charm because this way I get to attack the very many greedy mana bases of modern. And uh, what does Is It Merc I do? Well, it's a deck very Legacy-esque, except it plays Ragavan, which isn't even legal in Legacy. Um, you play a lot of cheap cards, a lot of interaction, lining bolts, counter spell, and then you finish it off with a big Merc that regent. So this week, I'm playing against Andrea Mangucci, so I really had to bring out the big guns. And one of you guys in the comments suggested for me to play Black White Ephemerate. The entire deck is basically built around creatures entering the battlefield, but one in particular, which is Grief. When Grief enters the battlefield, it picks out one of the cards in your opponent's hand for free, basically, and you can also evoke the card by exiling another black card from your hand. Now, you take advantage of that by playing Ephemerate. Ephemerate exiles a creature and then brings it back into play. And when Grief gets Ephemerated, it forgets that it was evoked, so you don't even have to sacrifice it. If that doesn't sound like fun, I don't know what does. Andrea, it's yes. the third time in the feature match. Today we're playing Modern, we're not playing Popper or Legacy or any of that. Yeah. I hope you're confident in your deck. I am, I am, let's go. Let's go. All right. Eight. You may go first, if you'd like to. I'll go on the play, yes. All right. Yes, good luck. And to you. Okay, I win the Daryl, which is very important. And I'm on the play with two removal spells, which are very, very important to interact with the Grief Ephemerate plan of my opponent. So let's keep. Okay, mine's good, I'll keep it. Um, I, hmm. So the hand doesn't have a Solitude and an Ephemerate, but this is only really good against creature decks. And apart from that, it really doesn't have anything going on. So I'm not gonna keep this one. I'm gonna mulligan down to six. Let's mulligan. All right, take two. Now down to six cards. This is a much better six. This has the Grief Undying Evil combo going on where I can exile Persist to evoke Grief, Persist the Grief, and then it comes back, get two cards for one, perfect. I'm just gonna put the equipment, the counter complete on the bottom so I can tutor it later if I need it with a Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, this is, this is better. Um, and I will put one on the bottom for me. All right, Polluta Delta, your turn. All right, um, I will draw. I'll play a Godless Shrine untapped, so going on to 18. And then I'll evoke a Grief. Okay. So this one enters the battlefield. Results. So at the bottom, there's the evoke trigger, where yep. I have to sacrifice it. On top, there's the discard part. Yep. So I'll choose you to reveal right. the hand. I'll show my very good end of two interaction pieces. Oh no, this is really bad because Andrea has two removal spells in his hand. So even if I pick one and then cast the Undying Evil, he can still remove the grief in response. This is even worse because I'm on the draw with Mulligan down to six. So oh, I just two for one myself. Ugh. I guess I will have to take the counter spell. Well, that feels very weird. And so then, yeah, I mean, I'm playing Fair Magic. I, this just resolves. I, I had nothing up my sleeve. Yeah, there just, was nothing just going a, nice, a nice little two for one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and then I'll pass the turn back. All right, end of turn I fetch. I get a 19. I got a Steam Vents end of turn. And I'll go to my turn. Yes. I'll play. Play another Flooded Strand to play around, uh, you know, just double removal spell up. Your turn. 
All right, I'll take my upkeep and my draw. Nah, I'm, I'm sitting pretty. I don't need to do anything. All right. I'll, I'll play a tap, Godless Shrine. Pass okay. the turn. Okay, okay, I'll take my turn then. Patch down to 18. All right. Now I'll uh, make a pretty powerful play. No, don't do that. Uh, I'll, I'll make a pretty powerful play here. Those are the worst. For me. <laughs> it's the, the card that everybody fears. The Blood Moon. The Blood Moon! No! Yes! <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright, yeah, that's, uh, that's fair. Blood Moon is tough because my deck doesn't play a lot of basics, a lot of double-faced lands and no fetch lands to search for those. Uh, this is not good. At least I have one planes. Alright. Your turn, um, Mr. Mono Red. Uh, I mean, you, you don't know how many lightning bolts I'm hiding in this deck. Okay, okay. All right, luck luckily I came prepared. Ooh. I did come prepared. I'll play my basic planes. Okay. There. I'll cast Sword of Fire and Ice. Ooh, very, Let, very threatening. <laughs> Sword of Fire and Ice is really good because Andrea's deck is red and blue, so once I stick that sword onto a creature, that bad boy is safe. Go ahead. Very threatening. Okay, I'll play an expressive iteration. Yep, express yourself. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna exile this, put this in end, put this to the bottom. And I'll play this, which comes into play untapped without me taking any damage. Because of Blood Moon. Then I play a Channeler. Yep. And then I play a Serum Visions. Alright. Surveil. With this on top. So I draw. So draw that. And then Scry too. Mm, I'll go top bottom. Sure. And I'm not in the Lyrium. You can go. As soon as I went for Channeler Serum Visions, I started being like. Oh no, what have I done? I tapped out of red mana. Now there's a Sword of Fire and Ice in play. And if my opponent draws a creature and it keeps the sword, I can't get out of it anymore. What have I done? Go! Alright, I'll untap. And I'll draw. Stoneforge Mystic is a great draw because not only does it cost two, so I can spend the other two to equip it right away, but also it can get me any other equipment for future turns. I will play a Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. I assume that resolves. Yep. And then I'll get myself an equipment. Yep. This one gets the old Batter Skull, the okay. classic. Okay, okay. Yeah, like, like we used to. Like we used to. And then this one goes into hand. I'll play a very impressive looking mountain. Okay. <laughs> and I'll equip this Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. So now I have to live with a Stoneforge Mystic with a sword on it. It's gonna be tough, but I got some lightning bolts now. I'm gonna go face with them. And go ahead. I'll go. And tap and drop. So I'll play a Mistress Bobble first. All right. Hmm. I'll leave this on top. Then I'll play an expressive iteration. Mm -hmm. And exile at the bottom. I'll play Sparbluff Canal, which comes into play untapped. Of course it does. That Blood Moon just upgrading your lands, Andrea. Yeah. And then I will crack the bubble so that I will have... Okay. Artifact, Sorcery, Instant and Land. So I'll, uh, this will give, this will be delirious, and yes. I'll attack you for five. All right. So three, sorry, down to fifteen. Yeah, down to fifteen. You go. Okay. I'll untap, and now I will also know what I'm about to draw. Oh, a mountain. Yeah, Takenuma. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, this sort of fire nice is made for attacking. Yeah. And that's just what it does. It's five damage. Um, yes, I guess pointing oh, the two oh, additional less. damage doesn't. Do anything, so it's five damage to you. Down to thirteen, and I'll draw a card. Yep. Yes, that's my turn. Yep. It's time to fire off the lightning bolts. I need to 
bold face and surveil. I need to find iterations, I need to find Merktai regions. I can't afford to miss a draw step. So every single time I have the uh, unknown on the top of my deck, I'm gonna bold to see if I'm gonna draw land or a spell because I don't have that much time. The Stoneforge Mystic plus Sword will kill me very soon here. All right. End of turn, I'm gonna point the Lightning Bolt at you. Ah, uh, the aggressiveness, down to 12. 12. to get the Surveil trigger. Yeah. All right, I'll leave the card on top. And um, on top. Sure. Draw. Yep. I'll attack you down to nine. Um, Unless you have something. Yeah, I guess that just happens, yeah. So you got a nine. Down to nine. And I'll pass the turn. All right. Yeah, I'll untap. Yeah. And take my draw. Andrea, this Blood Moon is very annoying. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I play it. <laughs> I'll, I'll add to my collection of mountains. Okay. First. And then I kind of have to stall the game here, but I only have one white source available to put an equipment into play with Stoneforge or cast the Oblivion Ring to take out the Dragon's Rage Channeler. And I really don't want to cast it because then Andrea can counter it with potential counter magic in his hand. Um, I guess I'll just have to pass the turn this time. Very, very interesting. You need that life gain with Butter Skull, I guess. I will uh, point another Lightning Bolt at you. Andrea, why do you have so many Lightning Bolts? <laughs> they're, they're very pretty, so... <laughs> they are. They're yeah. beta ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go to six I and do. I surveil. You do. I guess I surveil first. Maybe, you go to six. Yeah, maybe you want to make different choices. Once. Yeah, I'll bolt this Unholy Heat here. Why though? Why? It's so good. Look, it, it deals six damage, right? So... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need a dress down here. I think I'm gonna go for this play. I really just... Not a bolt on you. All right, triple bolt, three bolts. So I still got that surveil yeah. first. Okay, leave this on top. Yep. And then the bolt results, so you go to three. I go to three. Now my channeler is lethal, but I assume something bad will happen to it. We'll see, we'll have to find out. I'll, Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll uh, upkeep, do you do anything? Uh, no, I don't care about anyone's upkeep here. All right, then I untap and draw. You do. Ooh, do you happen to have a flying equipment by any chance? Look, I'll just put this Iganjo back into my hand and then... Yeah. All right, the channeler has to attack every turn, so let's let's do that part. Uh, no blocks. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll channel this, I'll channel the touch of the spirit realm, which exiles it and then returns at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, so that's like a flicker wisp effect. So this is exile that will return end of turn. Uh, that's okay. I'll play a very nice Merktide Regent here. Uh. Really <laughs> big. Yeah, it's gonna be a 8-8. Eight, eight. Lyrium, uh, yeah, pass. Andrea, this seems like a pickle. This is not a good situation for me here. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna draw for now. Yeah, the, the three Lightning Bolts uh, were nice. Yeah, triple Lightning Bolt. Uh, it will... Probably start with me getting into For the red sure. zone here. Yeah. Do you do damage to me? Yep. So I go to eight. So down to eight, and I draw a card. Yep. And I think just about does it here. I'm, I'm going to play another mountain. All right. Add nice. to my collection. Yeah, the Blood I, Moon is doing. It. I guess I'm going to cast my Batter Skull. Sure. Uh, I get a germ. Yep. And then it's your turn. I'll kill the germ. Yeah, you will. Surveil, land. Uh, just on top draw and uh, I'll attack. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that does it for yeah, me. Yeah, that's good. All right, I got there. The Lightning Bolt plan worked. I was very afraid after that, you know, tapping out at turn four, but I'm glad those nine point of burn spell worked out in the end. So against a deck that's so removal heavy, I really don't like relying on the all-in kind of game plan of Undying Evil and Ephemerate on turn one. So I'm just taking out three Undying Evil and one Ephemerate to slot in cards that are really good, just as Sanctifier and Vec, which empties out Andrea's graveyard, probably prevents him from getting Delirium. And also Chalice of the Void. That card is just a game winner. Okay, it's sideboard time. I'm gonna bring in some engineered explosives, some uh, dress down to answer the Sanctifier and Vec, as well as some more interaction in the form of a Brazen Bore and Subtlety. I'm also taking out some interaction, of course, like Spell Pierce. I decided to cut 
two Dragon's Ray Channeler. They were like very good in game one, of course. Um, I expect to, my opponent to bring in maybe some Rest in Peace, maybe some, again, Sanctifier and Vec, as well as uh, some removal spell for my Channeler. So I figured that I can take a little bit of the Graveyard Plan out. And I'm not cutting any Blood Moons. They were amazing in game one. So despite my opponent is playing just a two color deck, I think the Blood Moon will be good in this matchup. All right, game two. Let's I, go. I think I want to go first. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, losing that race that hard. This end is fine. I don't have any Ragavan on turn one. I'm really looking for that, but you just keep lands and spells. We're playing against a deck with, uh, you know, heavy disruption. So basically, let's keep lands and spells here. So while this hand doesn't have the Grief Ephemerate combo, this hand has everything else to make up for it. Like Sword of Fire and Ice, the best equipment against Andrea, Two basics to be safe against Blood Moon, Sanctifier Anvec, and a Chalice of the Void. All right, so I and this time I'm even gonna keep. Okay, me too. All right, uh, we'll start it off easy with the planes. Okay. Nothing else. That's it? Go ahead. No Grief Ephemerate? No Grief Ephemerate. I'm safe. All right, I'll go Flood of Strand, your turn. So I choose to go Fetch Land Go, leaving up Lightning Bolt and not going for Serum Visions. While this might be weird because, you know, Serum Visions usually good on turn one. If my opponent didn't have a Grief on turn one, if they draw Grief on turn two, I still want to have the two burn spell uh, to respond uh, to the Ephemerate, just like in the previous game. Plus, if they go like Stoneforge, kill it end of turn, still a valuable play here. All right, upkeep, draw, play Swamp. Also notice how I'm Blood Moon Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I noticed. <laughs> uh, for a Chalice on one? Oh no, that's basically a Blood Moon for this deck. <laughs> it's a good comparison. All right, uh, I'm gonna fetch down to 19. 19? Another two or will it... Yeah. Getting Steam Vents? I'm gonna go to 17. 17. And I'll uh, respond to that with a Lightning Bolt. Targeting? Yeah, you, you. All right, all right, 17. <laughs> Last game it went well. <laughs> So right. this enters? Yep, yep. All right. Yep. Very good. Chalice of the Void is down. My deck is mostly one drop. I have to hope that I'm either going to draw Merktide soon or an Engineered Explosive, so it's going to be hard. Go ahead. I'll uh, play Island and pass the turn. All right. I will untap. I will take my draw. And I'll evoke Grief once again. Hmm. I can't bolt it. I'm gonna go with a counter spell. Yep, that works. And then I guess Persist. I will persist it. Yep. So it comes back with a minus one, minus one counter. Yeah, my hand is iteration yeah. and a bunch of one drops. All right, that's what I like to see when playing with Chalice of the Void. Yep. I rarely play with this card, <laughs> I have to say, but if it works, glorious. Um, I'll play a tap Godless Shrine and pass the turn. Yep. Uh, land go. Untap. Draw. I'll hit for two. Fifteen. And I'll cast a Sword of Fire. Nice. Strong. It is. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Draw a good card here. I'll fetch down to fourteen. So I'll fetch down to 14, then I will play an Unholy Heat that gets countered. Yep. Oh no! And it's then, a Merc Tide! <laughs> and then a Merc that region. Yes. It's gonna be, it's gonna get four counters. So 7-7. Seven, seven. Go. Untap, upkeep, draw. Man, this game is so much easier without a Blood Moon in place. <laughs> it's so much harder with a Chalice in <laughs> one. <laughs> I'll equip this. Let's, yep. let's be real. There's no way I'm not doing this. Hitting six. you. Uh, hitting you with all the damage. Yep. Six damage in total down to eight. Yep. And I also draw a card. Yep. This this sort of fire nice is doing some nice work. Yeah. I'll play a silent clearing. Mm-hmm. And so the huge Merc Tide is kind of scary, but I don't want to solitude it because that gains Andrea a lot of life. So I'll cast the Sanctifier instead, because if Andrea doesn't have an answer, that's lethal next turn. I guess I'll take this. Uh, I'll play <laughs> the end back. All right. You don't have any red cards in your graveyard, but I do don't. go down to 16 in the process of yep. casting it. Yep, yep, yep. Go ahead. 
And that's a good one because that makes your clock uh, a two turn clock now. Yeah. So I cannot race you anyway. So I just have to pass here. All right. Yeah, I guess it doesn't have protection from blue. I'll take my draw. I mean, I'm not sure what you might have in hand, but I'm going to try to equip the sword onto the onto this one and then yep. swing in with both. Yeah, this is Menace, protection from blue. I can't do anything. My hand is... Oh, man! Mine what? Drops. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't do anything against the Chalice. Yeah, the Chalice just being brutal. All right, Yaman, I brought my deck with my four Beta Lightning Bolt that you saw in game one, some of them. What about what about you? Where did you find your deck? Um, Boy, am I happy to tell you about Karma Crow because without them, I couldn't be sitting here playing with you because I can't afford a new modern deck every week. Karma Crow is the sponsor of the show by borrowing us all the cards that make this show possible. Usually, this time Andrea brought his own decks, but their inventory is huge and they're a power seller on card market since forever. So if you ever need a bunch of cards, you can just go to their shop probably find all the cards you need and they will ship them to you within two to three days usually. So yeah, thanks for sponsoring the video. All right, let's get to the sideboard now. For game three, I decide to trim on a little bit of cantrips. Um, Chaos of the Void is really hard to beat, so I want to cut some of the consider to not be left with, you know, a lot of dead cards if that happened. One spell pierce, more reasonable on the play, and the third counter spell in. I'm not considering any changes for the sideboard going into game three because I don't think my strategy evolves going from on the play to on the draw. I'll stick to what's there. Yeah. All right, on to game three. Let's go. So this is the decider. This is what it comes down to. Do you want to go first? I'll be on the play, yes. Not an amazing hand, but once again, I'm gonna keep a hand of four spell, three lands. We could look for better. Really wish I found one Ragavan in those games, but uh, I won't mulligan these kind of hands. I keep this hand. Once again, this hand is really solid. It has the Grief Ephemerate combo, and then it also has, has a Stoneforge Mystic to follow that up the next turn if for some reason the Grief combo goes wrong. Let's hope for a good game. All right, let's go. Uh, Misty Rainforest, your turn. All right, I will... Take my draw. I'll play an untapped Godless Shrine. Mm -hmm. Down to 18. First yes. blood. Let's go. And then I will evoke grief Woo. once again. Okay. I don't have a couple of bolts here, so I am cold to your ephemerate. Um, if you have it. All right, no bolts in Andrea's hand means the full combo is unlocked. Get ready to get your hand ripped apart, Andrea. So what I'll do is I will take the iteration and then you, you, you guessed it, I'll ephemerate the, yeah, yep, 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 yep. the grief. So this comes back Yep. and I will take the regent. Okay. All right, and a fetch end of turn. Mm. I was um, just bluffing a bolt, unfortunately I don't have it. Yeah, I mean I have to go for it, right? I, why am I playing the deck otherwise if, if I'm not even going for this? Uh, yeah, go All ahead. Right. I go. I hope you don't draw Mishra's Bobble. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna set on um, Fetch down at 18. And then I will play an Explosives Engineered on two. All right, it's on two. And your turn. All right, uh, I'll untap and during my upkeep, this has rebound, so I'll grief again, taking the Merc Tide. Oh, this feels so unfair. <laughs> um, and then I'll draw. Draw, yeah. I will play an Agadim's Awakening on the backside, Agadim the Under Crypt, taking three. 15. Down to 15. And... I got it. I got to get things moving. I'm going to cast a Stoneforge Mystic. Yep. And I'll grab myself a Sword of Fire. Nice. That one proved really good the past few games. A trusty sword. Uh, so this one has summoning sickness. Yep, yeah, it can't attack. And I'll pass the turn to you. All right, draw. I'll play uh, top land and pass. All right. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'd like to head into the red zone. Hit you for three. 15 each. And I'll play a tap 
another tapped Ag Deem the Under Crypt. Okay. And pass the turn. I go? Sure. Okay. I will um, fetch down to 14. Down to 14. Did you find another Murktide? No, unfortunately, no Murktide. I will crack my explosives engineered. Well, I guess I have to respond to that and activate yep. it, putting yep. this into play. Yep, this sword is resolves. In. And then I will dash a Ragavan. Yeah. Which will uh, attack you for two. Sure. So you go to 13. I do. And exile then the top card. Exile the top card. That's so land, clear. I'm getting a treasure. Pass, the Ragavan goes back to hand. It does. Go. All right. First show off for Ragavan in this video, so. True. That's good. It arrived. It's missing the party. Untap, draw. I'm kind of struggling on lands here. A fourth one would be really good because then I could equip and protect my grief at the same time. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm gonna equip the sword. Resolves. Hit you for a total of seven. Yep, so I go to seven and you draw a card. No bolts, for unfortunately. And I'm just gonna have to pass the turn. All right. Hope your top deck is gonna be nice to me. Okay, let's go for a Ragavan. Yeah. Oh, no whammies. Come on, just get a, <laughs> no. a Doom Blade. Attack for two. Yes, down to 11. 11. Millicard. All right, let's go, 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 go. see it. Potter cool. Oh. It's gonna stay there, unfortunately. Oh. Ooh. Pretty cool play that's gonna happen now. I'll pay three. And I'll channel an Otawara which is gonna bounce the grief, and even if the card is blue, it's actually not blue because yeah. it's a land. Yeah, it's a land. So that's good. I pay only three because of the discount of Ragavan. Yeah, of course, it's a legendary creature. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice draw. That was yeah. a nice draw. <laughs> All right, and I pass the turn. Yep, okay. so Ragavan returns to your hand. Your turn. Okay, okay, woof. On top, this is How was spicy. I was die there, <laughs> but the Ottawa are saving the day here. I guess what I will have to do is evoke grief by exiling another grief. Okay, so I'll show you my hand. Yeah. I'll pick the Ragavan and then channel the nice. touch of the spirit realm. Okay. So this goes onto my yeah. end step. And I can't count and, and I can't discard it. Yeah, and then it comes back. And I can't counter it. Yeah, that's that's a way. And then I'll pass the turn. Alright, I need some top decks now. Yeah, no whammies, please just let this grief stay alive. It goes with iteration, it has to start. It has to start with iteration, it's not. I pass the turn. I am dead to grief plus sort of fire and ice because I'm on seven and that's exactly seven damage. So as I top deck this burn spell, you know, you should just kill the thing to not die. But my problem with that plan is that my opponent has five or six cards in hand and they're constrained in mana, they only have three mana. So I have to hope that they don't have another blink effect so that um, I can like not only kill the grief that's lethal, but also eat two mana. So I just have to be greedy here and risk it. Whew. All right, I'll untap, keep draw. I'll try to equip this. Respond? Yep. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I hope you don't have another protection. Um, I do. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll cast a Malachi. It's very greedy for me, maybe, but yeah, all right. You still had it up. So. All right, so this, uh, it dies. It dies, you lose two life. Malachi Rebirth. You bring, get a nine. Brings it back, tapped. No hand. No cards in hand. And that's my turn. This is intense top deck in yeah. here. So if Andrea doesn't draw anything good here, I can equip next turn and then that should be game over. Come on, something good. I have to pass again. All right. I'll play planes. All right, another land is a very good start. I don't know exactly what kind of interaction you're running, especially in your sideboard. So I think this is safest. I will uh, try to equip this. I have another removal. All right. Um, no, no, no. I, I do have another no. one of these. <laughs> I, I, got, I got very greedy once again. It's okay. Uh, what All is right. this sequence of plays? Okay, so you discarded another oh. one of those. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. Fine. Oh, actually, so it stays yeah, until yeah, the it's end. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, but it's yeah. your turn once again. Yeah, I, again, I could have killed that in my turn. I just wanted to eat two mana of yours. 
I, I, I figure you finish those, but uh, they never end. They never end. All right, no. I draw once again. <laughs> <laughs> once again, if Andrea doesn't draw any removal spell, I can equip, and then that should be game over. Okay, that's another re- Oh no, that's actually a really good draw, if you draw- That's a redraw. Yeah. Whew. If that's something good, then Scry 2 can really shape up your hand. I'll keep like this. You go. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. I mean, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting greedy with my removals. You wouldn't be greedy once again, right? Uh, I've been greedy for three turns in a row. So. Okay, let, let's try differently this time, Andre. Okay. Uh, let's try it like this. Chalice of the Void first. Chalice of the Void on one. Resolves. Resolves. And then I'd like to try and equip. Resolves. Yes! <laughs> um, I'll head into the red zone. Okay, I don't know blocks. All right. Damage? Yes. Nice. All right. I lose yeah. then. <laughs> Good game. Good games. The risk didn't pay off. Yamen yeah, had the third blink effect and I lose the game. That's okay. Oh, wow, Yamen. Yeah, that sort of far nice was your companion. I had to stare <laughs> at that like every game and my blue red deck did not like look, it. Look, they banned Lurus. What, what's one supposed to do? I'm, I'm just bringing Sword of Fire and Ice as a companion. All right, next time I'll bring some upgrades here because I need to destroy <laughs> those artifacts. That being said, if you would like to see a different companion on the show, scroll down there, subscribe, and leave a comment with the decklist you would like to see. And we'll see you next week.